Hello and welcome to Battleground 2014. Today we are going to discuss the assembly elections in Haryana. With no pre-electoral alliances in place, the 90 seats of Haryana Legislative Assembly will see a multi-cornered contest. Although there are six parties and many independents in the fray, the main contest is between three, the Congress, the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Indian National Lok Dal. There are three other parties, the Haryana Janhit Congress, the Haryana Jan Chetna Party, the Bahujan Samaj Party and the Haryana Lokhit Party. Chief Minister Bhupendra Singh Huda is hoping that his Congress will win a third term. His biggest challenge is the anti-incumbency of 10 years that his government faces. The BJP is hoping that it will repeat its performance of Lok Sabha and it is relying entirely on the magic of Narendra Modi to do the trick. As for the INLD, although it was the second largest party in the outgoing assembly, it is hampered by the fact that its leadership has been jailed in a teacher recruitment scam. To discuss the prospects of various political parties in Haryana in the coming election, I have with me a very distinguished panel of experts. We have with us uh, Professor Pramod Kumar, he's an old friend of mine, an eminent uh, political analyst, newspaper columnist. He's the director of Institute of Development and Communication in Chandigarh. We have with us another eminent journalist, Mr. Ramesh Vinayak, he's the resident editor of Hindustan Times. And we also have with us Professor P.S. Verma, a well-known political scientist. He was Professor of Politics at Punjab University and is currently associated with the Institute for Development and Communication. I welcome all of you to this discussion. Uh, Pramod, let me begin with you. Why has the BJP decided to enter the fray on its own without any alliances? Is it because the BJP now thinks it's a national party and is fully capable of uh, representing regional interests? Or is it because it tried for an alliance with the Haryana Janit party, it tried for an alliance with the INLD, and for a variety of reasons, those alliances did not take place. Uh, Bharat, I think that uh, this should be seen in a broader context that uh, BJP has changed its electoral strategy now. It's going alone, I mean, in uh, Haryana, in, in, in Maharashtra, maybe, I mean, later on in some other parts of the country also. So basically, now it has entered into a second phase of from ex consolidation to expansion, where it wants to expand its support base and then emerge as a national party. And it is also trying to regionalize its leadership, regionalize its support base, regionalize the idiom of politics also, the kind of symbolism which they are using are regional in nature. So it's a great threat to the survival of regional political parties. So it's doing it deliberately. It's a conscious strategy and politics as I understand. So this is a new trend which, is, which has been introduced in Indian politics. That a party which, which is now earlier used to consolidate by entering into various alliances with the regional parties now wants to expand and which is threatening the, even the existence of some of the regional parties. For example, Lokdal in Haryana. And also, I mean, it's posing a major threat to the Haryana uh, Janit party, I mean, that uh, Vishnu's Janit party, Congress. Janit Congress. So basically, I think that this is a, a very, very calculated strategy and it is uh, it, it, it is kind of a building up uh, an alternative, providing alternative to the voters in the state of Haryana and also in the country. Okay. Uh, Ramesh, although it's a cliche to say that Indian politics is caste-based, but Jats are the uh, preponderant caste in Haryana, 25% of the total population. Who do you think they'll prefer this time? With each of the three major parties, Congress, BJP and INLD trying to woo them, do you think they'll show a marked preference for any one of them? Uh, Bharat, you know, it's true that uh, Jats are a very vocal and dominant uh, caste in Haryana. And uh, they do... Uh, uh, I would say play a decisive role who uh, gets to form the government in Haryana. They are 23 percent and they, you know, uh, as we are doing some calculation, they really matter in about 38 constituency. They can swing the outcome of elections. If they vote together. If they vote together, they go as a group. And uh, electoral history of Haryana, uh, you know, shows that they have generally gone as a group. I mean, they swing in one side, you know, to one side. So which side will they swing this time? Uh, this time, I would say, you know, I went to Haryana. I have uh, met a couple of, you know, their JAT leaders. At the moment, I think they are just weighing their options. And uh, to be very frank, you know, Dr. Pramod and Dr. Verma would bear me out. Haryana politics has been JAT dominated, you know, whether it's in matter of governance, in matter of jobs, matter of even development, you know, JATs have always got lion's share of, you know, uh, things, I mean, you know. So, JATs would like to, you know, uh, go in for a party which they think is going to 
uh, form the next government, you know. So at the moment, I think they are still weighing their option between INLD, Indian National Lok Dal, you know, and the BJP, I would say, you know. So, so at the moment... It's interesting you're leaving out the Congress. Uh, I don't think that the Congress would get, you know, a, a major share of the JAT vote this, this time, yeah. Uh, uh, Professor Verma, how successful has the BJP been in wooing the Jats? Of the 25 Jat candidates it's fielded, 19 are defectors from the Congress and the INLD. And if the BJP were to project that it's a party of Jats as well, does it not stand in danger of alienating its traditional supporters amongst Brahmins, Banyas, uh, Shadulkas, Rajputs? BJP in Haryana is not the party of Jats. Its support base lies in the upper caste particularly in the trading communities. It has been having alliances with the jat based political parties. In Elo, for example. Bansilal, for example, in 1996. Sodri Bansilal formed his own group, Haryana Vikas Party, and they had aligned with him. And several times they aligned with Sodri Devilal, Om Prakash Chotala, and in Elo. Now, therefore, in the past, the BJP had no chance to make its base in the Jat community, which is a dominant caste. And most of the elections, whether for parliament or uh, state assembly, elections are determined by caste factor, and that to be a dominant caste factor. No, no, but how will they, how attractive are they to Jats? And in becoming attractive to the Jats, might they not lose their upper caste support? I don't think BJP would be having a, a major chunk of Jat votes this time too. Because Jats are thinking in terms of uh, the formation of the government and they would like to see who becomes the chief minister. Okay, but now let me ask you a supplementary question. Now, do you think the, uh, the fact that the BJP got the Jat vote in Western UP, which is also a Jat dominated area, and they've been getting uh, that controversial MP from there, Sanjay Balyan, to visit Haryana several times. So do you think that the Jats have voted uh, in Western UP for BJP in the Lok Sabha election will matter to Jats of Haryana? The factors were very different in the Western UP and in the context of Haryana. So you're saying it won't make a difference? There was something else which mobilized Jats communal, in favour uh, of a particular... There was communal polarization. Nagar, for example. Okay. Nothing like that in Haryana. Okay. Haryana people are not communalized that way. They are casteized, the caste-based politics. Now the thing is that the Jats will think in terms of the formation of the government. BJP, I don't think, can win the Jat support unless it declares the leader for the Chief Jats. Minister, can, Chief Minister Chief candidate. Minister's candidate. Okay. Which it can't afford to do, I presume. Which can't afford to do because but of... Pramod, uh, would the fortunes of BJP in this election change because of defection of people like uh, Chaudhary Birinder Singh Ajat from Congress or Rao Indrajit uh, from Congress again and Ahir. So when a political party wants to become a catch-all party, a leader of Jats, Ahirs, Rajputs, Brahmins, Banyas, everybody, then what political implications does it have for that party? What happens to its uh, organic support base and what happens to its polit politics as such? But there are uh, stages in politics. In the initially, when you become a catch-all party, and you do social engineering to achieve that. You bring some leaders, I mean, who happen to be prominent Jat leaders. Yeah. You bring in Punjabis also. You bring in different segments of uh, population. You initially take a mile ahead. I mean, you move ahead in that. But maybe later on, after five years, I mean, they, they have to have an organic sport base evolved within these, I mean, kind of subgroups. So my, I mean, take on this is that uh, in this election, BJP's strategy of using symbols which sports that catch all, I mean, strategy will definitely work. And number two, as you mentioned, it will work even uh, without Kamasa they declaring Jats. a JAT uh, chief minister yes. candidate? Yes, yes. And uh, what, what Ramesh was saying, I fully agree with him. The JATs, for example, they are waiting, I mean, uh, uh, are calculating who will form the government. And I think that somewhere uh, there are JATs which used to be earlier divided. I mean, for example, there is a particular belt. Uh, Deswali belt is with uh, Mr. Huda and then the Bagri belt which is uh, uh, with, with uh, Mr. Chutala. So the Jats are historically divided in Haryana. But this time, if people are Jats are weighing I mean, their options, I think the natural beneficiary may be BJP. And this, this one has to be very clear, carefully watching. I mean, this, will, this, this may happen this time. And next election, I, I, I am I'm sure, I mean, 
uh, BJP cannot rely on this engineering part. They have to organically build their support base amongst different parties. Otherwise, it's, uh, uh, it's sustainability of this engineering may not last longer. Uh, Ramesh, the BJP seems to be relying uh, entirely on the magic of uh, the Modi Amit Shah team. And uh, Mr. Modi is supposed to hold 10 rallies or about 10 rallies uh, in Haryana. Now, the, uh, this, this team's magic didn't work in the recent by-elections uh, to various uh, state assembly segments. But uh, do you think this magic will work in Haryana? Well, I think that you know, Modi magic uh, would carry them through. I mean, and BJP has no other option because they don't have any state leader, you know, uh, which has, you know, pan Haryana charisma or, you know, leader of that stature. So, per se, they have to depend on Mr. Modi to, uh, you know, attract different vote banks. And if you look at their, um, you know, uh, catch line, you know, their entire uh, campaign, you know, they are saying, Aao Modi ke saath chale. You know, that's their, uh, you so know. So, you think this magic will work? I think it will work. Okay. You know. Let's talk about the Congress, Professor Verma. Uh, will the assembly election performance of the Congress be determined by its bad performance in Lok Sabha, where it won only one out of ten seats? You see, in the parliament, the scenario was very different. And there was a very strong Modi wave in the entire country. And that was the basic region. Now, since Haryana is basically caste-dominated politics, Caste and politics are interlocked. So this interlocking is working very successfully during the assembly polls. But it didn't work successfully during the Lok Sabha polls. It, it, the caste politics is not that very important factor in the Lok Sabha polls. Because they don't have any immediate stake. They are not interested in making their own prime minister. So you are saying that it's uh, too early to write off the Congress? It is. I, I can't say, but uh, uh, Congress position uh, keeping in view the Jat factor and the developmental agenda uh, and the leadership project. The three factors combined together. They projected uh, Bhupendra Singh Hooda. There is no other leader. Bhupendra Singh Hooda. Uh, uh, Pramod, how serious is the anti-incumbency against the Congress? And, and will it increase because the party has uh, fielded 33 sitting MLAs? Um, before I mean, uh, uh, commenting on this, one point I would like to add. The whole, uh, the change in uh, politics and political idiom uh, where reg national parties are successfully regionalizing their agenda, their leadership, which means the regional political parties will find it tough, I mean, to compete with them, one part, that, that's one yes. issue. Second issue is, which you have mentioned, that the whole issue of 10 years of anti-incumbency. Uh, I think, I mean, that is definitely functional. Ten years is a long period, I mean, uh, particularly state like Haryana, I mean, where is a small state and people are looking forward, I mean, to have uh, uh, greater access to the resources which somehow, I mean, they, they may feel or perceive they are, they are not getting. So, I think anti-incumbency is definitely activized and that anti-incumbency, how far uh, Mr. Huda is able to promise them or ho give them hope that uh, in the next five years he will be able to meet their expectation. The aspiring middle class will be able to get integrated into the national uh, mainstream uh, which Mr. Modi has been promising that this aspiring middle class will have a better future and achhe din aane wale hai. So how far I mean uh, he is able to convince uh, this aspiring middle class that through him also achhe din aayenge. So that I think achhe din aane wale aur achhe din aayenge. Dono ka competition mujhe lagta hai. It's a very, very tough competition. Which is We're going to discuss this further, but we need to take a break at this point. We'll be back again in a bit. Don't go away. Welcome back. We're discussing the assembly elections in Haryana. Ramesh, before we went on the break, you wanted to say something about anti-incumbency, but I also want to ask you, how will the controversy over land acquisition, particularly the land deals of Robert Wadra, the son-in-law of uh, Congress Chief Sonia Gandhi, impact the chances of the Congress in the state? Bharat, it's a fact that you know these controversial land allotments have given a major ammunition to the opposition parties. And they are harping on it in the election campaign. They are trying to make the most of it. And uh, that issue is part of an overall anti-incumbency factor against the Huda government. 
you know, what has also reinforced this anti-incumbency sentiment is the charges of discrimination or bias in dwellment. And mind you, those charges have been made uh, more by the Congress people, you know, whether it's Kumari Selja, you know, Rajya Sabha MP or Chaudhary Brinder, when he was with the Congress, you know, he was making this allegation charge against Mr. Huda all the time. So, you know, so and discrimination this, amongst various factions of the Congress? No. And their patronage networks or is it regional discrimination? It's a regional discrimination in terms of development. A lot of people say, and this is a very commonly held impression in Haryana, that it is uh, certain areas, especially the Rotak belt from which uh, Mr. Uh, Huda comes from, uh, which has benefited the most from the development, you know. And a lot of areas have been left out, uh, out of this overall development. And this, uh, you know, anti-incumbency also has another angle, which is caste-based, you know, where Dr. Uh, you know, Verma was hinting at that, you know, Jats have got a major share of this development, you know, or the, you know, jobs, which are a big issue in Haryana. So the other communities are feeling left out, that they feel that they haven't got their rightful share in the jobs, you know, which is what, you know, I think is going to work to BJP's advantage, you know, when it comes to non jat vote banks. Uh, uh, Professor Verma, uh, if we leave anti-incumbency aside, or let's say anti-incumbency can be countered, uh, and I thought that the welfare measures that the Huda government brought in would counter that anti incumbency to some extent. For example, they're saying that we give the highest pension, old age pension of 1,000 rupees per month uh, in the state. They also say that we've raised the retirement age of government servants from 58 to 60. We've written off the loans of scheduled castes and uh, backward castes to the tune of 153 crores, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, Open new universities. Uh, given the local Sikhs their own Shiromani Gurdwara Prabandha Committee. So these welfare measures, will they be able to counter uh, the anti-incumbency that exists or they will be just forgotten? The opposition parties are harping on two most important issues. The first most important issue is the land acquisition, CLUs and that. Not Robert Badra is not a major issue here. But land acquisition is a factor. And people think that the Congress has eaten away funds. That's and there is a corruption in that. Okay. This is one aspect. But uh, there is uh, no litigation or no court cases or nothing of that sort. People generally believe that there is some corruption in regard to the land deals. It is a fact. And it is a government of the builders. At the real estate. But no proof has been forthcoming. But there is no proof. But proof apart. The Huda government has initiated certain developmental schemes, which he had handled very successfully. No, no. What so he has done is the, known. I am saying, how will the voters wait? I think in certain areas where the land was acquired, people may vote against Congress. In those areas. Okay. But not the entire state is affected by that. Okay. The most important factor is, I think, the JAT okay. and the non JAT factor, yeah. urban and the rural issues, and uh, the major exodus from the Congress to the BJP may prove counterproductive to the BJP in the sense people are talking. I went to certain villages in the Zin site. People say that is it an election between the Congress? The Congress candidates are fighting against each other or BJP versus the Congress. Okay. So this has created a sort of uh, 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 situation in which people have uh, uh, been thinking whether they should go for this type of politics of Dal Badal from Ayaram to Gayaram to Dal Badal. Okay. It's a also, major activity. Also, Bharat, like you, know, you indicated, you know, Congress has renominated most of its sitting MLAs and they were the face of this anti incumbency. So I think this may go against the Congress, that they were not able to bring many fresh faces or were able to jettison, you know, especially those MLAs who were facing charges of corruption, like these five MLAs, you know, who uh, are facing charges of, you know, this uh, corruption and the cases before the Lokpal. Lokpal has already recommended a high-level probe against those five MLAs. And... Uh, they've been fielded? 
they have been re, you know renominated they have been fielded and there was a faction within the congress led by the state congress uh, president ashok tanwar who was uh, you know steadfastly opposing their renomination so there is infighting in the congress yes, there, there is okay pramod let's talk about the inld the inld uh, backed the second highest number of seats in the outgoing assembly 31 Now, will the INLD benefit or will it suffer because its top leadership in jail? So, do do its supporters see uh, the Chotalas as martyrs, uh, or do they see them as people you know who've uh, betrayed them and you know uh, indulged in corruption? So far as uh, supporters are concerned, they naturally see them as uh, martyrs that they have uh, given them jobs and because of jobs they are behind the bars. They have something I mean done good to the people and they are behind the bars for the supporters. but the general public i mean uh, and i have seen a shift in uh, congress uh, electoral strategy where they are now focusing on making people remember those chotalas days uh, when uh, there used to be extortion when they were ruling the state and they have done all kind of distortions in governance so i think i mean reminding people of that may also i mean uh, make uh, uh, make some people sit on the fence not move, move towards uh, lokdal and may move towards bjp so that may not benefit the congress with that campaign but may benefit bjp because somewhere i mean uh, anti incumbency as it has been mentioned is there against the congress party but you asked the question on uh, number of sops which uh, mr huda has given now the political question arises can sops make political parties win elections that's that's, that's, a, that's a most important question and i find uh, there are a priori before the sops there are two things which one must i mean uh, look into number one uh, that the whole credibility of the leadership that there is no infighting there is no factionalism there is a one leader who is unquestioned leader but haryana i mean there are that doesn't happen in democratic in parties you know but, it and i know ha uh, but but somewhere i mean that mr modi could present that that he is unquestioned Uh, for the time being and number 2 uh, which is most important that uh, the whole issue of corruption or uh, in governance i mean that uh, how you have performed what was your performance earlier whether the discrimination against some areas or it's against some people so if that perception is uh, uh, countered and or i mean uh, people are convinced that nothing of that sort has happened then mr huda can definitely benefit uh, professor verma uh, you know uh, mr om prakash chotala is on bail on medical grounds yet he is uh, doing uh, you know sort of carpet bombing in terms of campaigning you know addressing so many rallies every day etc now how decisive is this campaigning going to be in polarizing the jhat vote bank you see uh, in the jhat belt this family has its own committed voters and many voters in the jhat belt also have this sympathy they sympathize with so it will benefit this. you say I think it will benefit. Okay, uh, Ramesh, uh, don't the Haryana Janhit uh, Congress and the BJP share the same non-JAT uh, 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 vote bank? And because they don't have an alliance, wouldn't the non-JAT vote then get divided? And if it gets divided, who will it benefit? Will it benefit the Congress or will it benefit the INLD? Yes, there is an overlap uh, in the vote banks of Haryana Janhit Congress as well as the uh, Congress. and even bjp i mean you know but you know uh, if you look at the lok sabha trends and uh, you know uh, the way bjp uh, performed exceptionally well i mean you know it is unprecedented performance by bjp in haryana when they won you know seven out of eight seats that they contested and they figured out that their alliance with haryana janit congress is not working uh, and because haryana janit congress was unable to transfer its non jhat vote bank to bjp in the constituency where haryana uh, congress uh, bjp was contesting uh, so they they dumped you know haryana janit congress that in its of no use and they decided to so go who will benefit if the non jhat vote splits who benefits congress or inld i think if modi magic works then the non jhat vote would shift to bjp, to BJP. in block okay all right a quick uh, question from you about the aam aadmi party the aam aadmi party secured 4% vote in the lok sabha election and they are not contesting the assembly election so we will that uh, vote shift you see there are different regions in the state yeah. in the ahirwal belt for example gurgaon mahendragarh narnol and that side yeah. more than 10 constituencies the entire aam aadmi party base which on to bjp in the new belt between the congress and the nl 
bell, BD violet. That was a major. So you say it will split. It, it will. No one party will benefit. It will. Split. Okay, so we are running out of time. A last question to you, Pramod. Is there a tacit understanding between the BJP and the INLD, although they are contesting against each other? And I ask you this question because IN, INLD in Haryana is being supported by Prakash Singh Badal's Shiromani Akali Dal. So is it possible they fight separately? There is a tacit understanding and if uh, nobody gets a clear majority, then they form a government together in Haryana. In politics, even if you don't have understanding, you do form government I mean, together after the elections. And uh, I, I think that, and particularly Haryana, where the culture of IRAM, Gairam is so much institutionalized that even after the elections, I mean, uh, the alliance between uh, BJP and uh, Lokdal cannot be ruled out. But the only thing is that BJP is hoping to come to power on its own. That may be, I mean, sending some kind of jitters, I mean, uh, within the Lokdal that somewhere they are being uh, ignored and they are not being okay. co-opted. Right. So that may happen. Okay, we've run out of time. I would like to thank all of you, Professor Verma, Ramesh Vinayak, Dr. Pramod Kumar for coming here and participating in this discussion at Chandigarh's Rock Gardens. Thank you very much. That's all we have for you today. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.